Hello and welcome back to my sadly rare videos. Today I wanted to just shortly go over all the new stuff that got added in Sons of Attila, and the stuff that changed as well of course. And as usual, let's go over the new ships first. I'll just go over them very shortly as a general impression. First we have the German Drache, a rank 4 battle rating 3.3 coastal vessel. It's a very big vessel, it has the blue water damage model, I think it has a coastal spawn, but I think it's going to be a bit underwhelming for a 3.3 coastal vessel. It comes after the MZ-1 in the deck tree. Then we have the Japanese PT-808. A worse PT-15. Worse torpedoes, worse top speed, lower survivability for as far as I know, but an identical main armament of two 40mm bofers and the same battle rating but one rank lower, coming after the Type K-7. Then we have the Mommy and our first blue water vessel. It's the new reserve destroyer for Japan, and it is a somewhat worse Mitsuki, having one less gun, fewer and worse torpedoes, although it is still decently fast, it is a lot smaller, and it no longer has the massive Amorak vulnerability below its second turret. It also has a somewhat armored belt for a destroyer, which is something you don't often see, especially with the Japanese. But oh well. On we go to the second and last destroyer this update, the Italian Impetuoso, a rank 2 4.0 destroyer. As you can see, it is equipped with American weaponry and the famous 5 inch 38s. This should be a very nice ship to fill the Italian 4.0 lineup, although sadly the anti submarine mortar doesn't work yet. Then, finally, for our Tech 3 editions and our first new rank 6 vehicle, USS Texas, a famous American battleship. Although, in War Thunder you can describe it quite simply. A Wyoming hull with the firepower of a Nevada. Having 10 14 inch guns, but the same vulnerabilities as the Wyoming with a somewhat vulnerable frontal ammo rack. Also do note that the Texas has the same reload as the other American 14 inch armed battleships, going from 52 seconds to 40 depending on your crew skill. Luckily it does also have a very good NTR suite, though sadly not the 5 inch 38 to rely on as dual purpose armament. Then we get to a natural consequence of rank 6 being introduced, our premium battleship additions. These being Arkansas, a premium Wyoming with more anti-air, though lackluster anti-air at the same time, Marat, which is a Russian battleship of the same class as Poltava and Parishkaya Komuna, and being somewhere in between the two in terms of what refit it is in, and finally Nassau, a vessel very similar to the Westfalen, which is a subpar battleship, although I recently got it and I must admit I've been enjoying it quite a bit. So, three premium battleships, one for America, one for Germany and one for Russia, the quote unquote big three. They are an inevitability of rank 6 being added and yeah, I can't really complain about it, but if you are somebody who's looking to get into naval or you do not have battleships yet, I must recommend you do not buy premium battleships. First of all, they're expensive and they're not the best of ships to begin with. Second of all, battleship gameplay is really, really niche when it comes to naval. It is slow, it is vulnerable, which would be surprising, but yes, it is vulnerable to when you're being focus fired. All in all, I do not recommend it to people who do not know how to play naval. Now, that's all our ship additions. A decent selection of ship with some nice additions, some questionable additions, but overall an all right naval patch, I guess. Can't win all of them. And now we go on to the other inevitable consequence of rank 6 being added. Is economy changes. And I again made a little spreadsheet summarizing the economy changes. This of course being the summary of all of the changes. I have noted down all the differences of each tech tree individually, and this spreadsheet will be found in the description of this video. So please read through it, have a look through it, and if there are any questions about the spreadsheet, be sure to ask me either in the comments, or if you can find me on Discord, there's fine too. Or heck, even business email if you really have to. But now, to summarize, without just looking at this data. Blue Water Fleet is becoming a lot cheaper, especially getting to the end of the cruisers and the early battleships has become significantly cheaper. Very good. 
The meters are also becoming cheaper. Sometimes it's staying the same, but rarely is anything going up in price. And if something's going up in price, it's either because they go up in rank, or it's just like a negligible amount, really. Can't say the same for coastal vessels, though. Although you could consider that natural because they didn't get a rank 6. Although some of them did get changed, some of them did get a lot cheaper, some of them got moderately cheaper. Some of them went up in price, which is a bit like really, but oh well. All in all, very good economy change for naval, definitely. If you're somebody who wants to get into Blue Water Navy and you like the later cruisers like the Zara, the Hipper, the Mogami, the Suzia Tone, the London, the Kent, the Norfolk, stuff like that. If you like those late cruisers, now's the time to get them. They've become a lot cheaper, the road to get them has become a lot cheaper, and you'll be getting away with it with a lot more ships than you would have think. However, there is sadly a caveat, and it mildly infuriates me. And that slight infuriation would be this. Many of you will be familiar with the economy roadmap Gaijin, you know, brought forth after the whole player strike fiasco a while back. And on that roadmap there was a box marked Revision of Naval Progression. We all had a lot of ho high hopes. I know quite a few people who had hoped that this meant that coastal would become a little bit easier to progress through because coastal is really, really painful to get through to the higher tiers. So... You can imagine my frustration seeing that box now ticked. And this is where I go a little bit out of my usual character and say, Gaijin, you really dropped the fucking ball on this one. This is not a revision of naval progression. This is a natural change to naval progression that happens when you introduce a next top tier rank. This has happened for every time a next higher rank of ground forces has been introduced, and if everything below it became cheaper. Every time a higher tier arc force rank got introduced, everything below it got cheaper. A new top tier rank for naval got introduced, everything became cheaper. That is what has always happened. This is not a special revision of naval progression. And it really pisses me off that they ticked this off, whilst in some cases, coastal trees became more expensive to get most difficult part of naval to really get into is the coastal tree because you cannot research it efficiently because you just get seal clubbed by destroyers or hell even cruisers if you're high enough BR. I have been a fan of the roadmap. I think most people have been fans of this roadmap. It's been a great change. The economy of war has really improved thanks to it. Thanks to that whole kerfuffle with the strike. It actually worked. It's done phenomenal, phenomenal work. But this, the fact that a natural progression, what happens when a new top tier rank is introduced, is ticked off as a revision of naval progression, infuriates me to my very core. And some of you might not understand why. Perfectly acceptable. And I will still say, very good economy changes. But really, really the snail should do something about the coastal grind. And I was hoping that that revision would do something to it. But, rant over, let's get back to some of the other more positive and more fun changes about this update. When it comes to mechanical changes, the one change that has been ruffling a lot of feathers is the whole segment saturation change. It is not really that big of a change, but at the same time it is. You see, if I take the new Momi as an example, all vessels, including coastals, which I really shouldn't, now have a hull segment that can get damaged as well as internal crew compartments. Coastals, of course, just have the hull segments, but stay with me for a second. And if these hull segments get knocked out, if they turn black, it means you can no longer repair any flooding in that segment. It doesn't cause any flooding to happen in that segment. It just means you cannot repair any flooding in that segment. I'm not going to go further into it really, as I, one, don't really have too much experience with this new mechanic, and two, want to save it for a more purpose-made video. 
just know that I have had some situations where I have lost crew compartments, i.e. this battle in Westfall I've recently got, and you can survive if several knocked out crew compartments as long as you don't take flooding. The one direct change that is most noticeable that you should take away from this new mechanic is that torpedoes have become a whole lot more dangerous. Other than the flooding mechanic, naval radars also became a little bit more detailed, with them showing up on x-rays more often, and them having varying kinds of radar tracking, with each radar being modeled slightly differently. In general, a little bit worse than before the update, but I think a little bit more realistically. And now for a final addition, unless I miss something, customizable flags. You might, have, you might have noticed earlier in the video that this new tab is here, and when you click on it, you can change your flag. These are the navy flags of the in-game nations we already have. So these are flags that should already be findable on other ships in-game. Then, sadly, they are all GE flags, but that is kind of standard nowadays. National flags, which is then a flag of every single country, like you have decals. I think it's at least every single country, I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, lots of national flags, and of course, I've got my own flag as well. And it replaces the ship's flag. A really neat addition. And for the people who are free to play, do not worry, there are freely unlockable flags in a special section. These being the suits of cards, so the clubs, the spades, the hearts, and the diamonds as well as a few unlockable pirate flags. Let me find them. There's one of them. And I think there's a few more as well. Yeah, these all here. So this red skeleton and these flags here, as well as a checkered flag, is really unlockable to adorn your ship. A neat little customization option for your ships, although very historical. And as an aside as well, when it comes to customization, the way camouflage unlocks work is very different now. As you can see here, it's now point-based that is no longer tied to your game mode. So if you're an arcade player, if you're a realistic battle player, and, well, for ground and air, a sim player, every player gets the camos at the same rate, with the same requirements. So there's no longer any special bonus to playing realistic battles to getting your camos. Which has been fun for me as I am a Grand Arcade player and getting camos on my tanks can be quite difficult. And genuinely, that is it for this update. But there is a small little bonus, of course. And for once, my somewhat tardy video production has actually worked out in my favour. Because, as of now, if you use these wiki, these War Thunder wiki links, you can test sail the Kurama. And me being one of the few naval guys that sometimes make videos and has access to this, let me give you my opinion on Kurama. It is not a good ship. It is armed with two dual 12-inch batteries, similar to that of the Ikoma. And you think, ooh, it has a secondary battery of 8-inch guns, heavy cruiser guns, they must be quite a good battery, especially since the Japanese 8-inch guns reload really quick. And that is, sadly, where you'd be wrong. The 8-inch secondaries on Kurama, currently, remember, this is before you officially have access to it, has the same reload rate as the main guns, making them pretty much useless. Although, I say that, they are still all right guns and really, when, you, when I saw Kurama being announced, I already knew it was just going to be a nice collector's item. It is not going to be a meta ship. At 6-0, sure, it might do something, but it's it's not particularly well armored either. It has the same armor profile as the Ikoma. It is basically just a further a further development on Ikoma, but just different and quirky and weird. But I'll be sure to get it. You can guarantee that. Anyways, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next one, which I hope to produce soon.